But I hear rumors flying around. I got sick in the hospital. Well, I was, you know, in this day and time, you can't even get sick. You are strung out. Oh, well, by God, I'll tell you something, friend. I have never been strung out in my life, except on music. <laughs> when I got sick here in the hotel, I got sick here that one night. I had 102 temperature. They wouldn't let me perform. From three different sources, I heard I was strung out on heroin. I swear to God, hotel employees, Jack, bellboys, freaks that carry your luggage up to the room, people working around, you know, talking, maids. And I was sick. I was, you know, I was getting, had a doctor, had the flu, and I got over one day. Was I? But all across this town, I was strung out. So I told him earlier, and don't you get offended, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to somebody else. If I find or hear the individual that has said that about me, I'm going to break your goddamn neck, you son of a bitch. That is dangerous. That is damaging to myself, to my little daughter, to my father, to my friends, my doctor, to everybody in my relationship with you. My relationship with up here on the stage, it is dangerous. I will pull your goddamn tongue out by the roots. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyway, let me get out of this mood. I must preface this documentary by stating that I myself am a Elvis fan. I am not seeking to make this film to disparage or uh, discredit Elvis as an individual. In fact, I am making this so that people who are fans or who just wish to understand this very important figure more can understand the abject suffering that he went through in his lifetime due to an extreme addiction to very specifically prescription pills prescribed by his doctor. The clearest indication we have to the extent of the use of drugs by Elvis Presley is what was discovered in his system at the time of his death. At the time of his death in 1977, there were a total of traces of 14 drugs in his system, 10 of which which were present in significant quantities. This basically meaning that he had used them within a day or two of his death, and the body was not able to metabolize them, so therefore that is what existed at the time of autopsy. This list um, is as follows. He was at one point or another taking codeine, uh, which is prescribed as a cough syrup. Morphine, which that could be due to metabolization of the codeine. Um, these two really serious opioids were taken um, in the context of a massive contact cocktail of benzodiazepine type and barbiturate type drugs. These drugs are incredibly dangerous and many of the drugs that Elvis Presley was taking are no longer even manufactured in most uh, societies. So he was taking diazepam which is still prescribed and used. This is known as Valium. Valium is a long-acting benzodiazepine that's used to treat anxiety and insom insomnia. One of the more concerning drugs he was taking is the drug that I would term quite rightly the rock star killer methoqualone or Quaaludes which is the brand name for that drug and the one most encountered by people in the 1970s and 1980s. This is a drug so dangerous that it is no longer being used by physicians in general in any sort of form or treatment for anything. It's an incredibly dangerous drug. It's a drug that quite quickly results in overdose when taken in greater than prescribed amounts, and those overdoses are very often deadly. Elvis was also, unfortunately, given many other Quaalude-esque sedative hypnotics that are, frankly, quite obscure and, of course, never prescribed at this point. So to go through the list further, um, he was given in desmethyl diazepam, which is just another an obscure form of the Valium diazepam. He was given a compound called 
ethinamate, which is incredibly obscure. What little research I could find on ethinamate was that it was used as a short-acting hypnotic and sedative medication, um, sort of like, a bit like chloral, chloral hydrate in an early era as sort of a knockout medicine um, for sleep. He was on ethochlorovol, um, sold under brand name Placidil. This is the drug that was used latest by people that Elvis had in the system, but Placidil is now considered by doctors entirely unsafe for its purpose, inducing sleep and is no longer prescribed. Um, the last three drugs I'm going to mention are possibly the most disturbing when you understand their societal existence and use in context. He was on pentobarbital, phenobarbital, and butabarbital. Pentobarbital is one of the medications that up until recently was used in the death cocktail for lethal injection. In the context, pentobarbital, in the context of quaaludes, diazepam, and of course opioids, morphine or codeine, is a deadly combination. And it's a deadly combination for anyone who has a, who has a tolerance or who does not have a tolerance. Indeed, it's um, frightening, actually, the drugs that Elvis Presley had been prescribed. And I think it's important for someone who does not understand the process of addiction and the living hell that it is to be guided through what probably occurred to Elvis um, as things went on. So, drawing from the major biographies, we know that Elvis first became addicted to pills in the, um, some say, in the Sun Records days, he may have been given um, amphetamines by Jerry Lee Lewis or Johnny Cash. This is debated. Elvis himself says that he became addicted to amphetamines when he was in the United States Army. And we can see ample evidence of that by both how incredibly thin he is and by a lot of testimony from people around him at the time. He continued to use amphetamines well into the 1960s but had to take various um, medicines to calm himself down from these amphetamines in order to sleep. Uh, we see evidence that Elvis was already a relatively high-strung individual to begin with, someone who talked a lot, was very excited, and probably had a hard time sleeping to begin with. So when someone like that is prescribed strong amphetamines, they can stay awake for days on end. Um, no, taking amphetamine pills is not like the smoking of methamphetamine by addicts in our society where a week at a time they might stay awake, um, but it still can be a very dangerous addiction. And it's in this context it's obvious that Elvis became addicted to the various medications for sleep that we see in a, what would be called by a doctor in this day and age, an insane cocktail. Um, indeed, if you were trying to um, euthanize someone, you would give them probably a very similar cocktail. Um, and what little information there is on such cocktails by municipalities that allow such a thing, it's pretty similar to this, with heart medication included. Essentially, Elvis was prescribed a deadly cocktail by a doctor that he trusted. And the question becomes for a lot of people, what would cause someone like Elvis Presley to become addicted to so many drugs, but also at the same time be so quote-unquote anti-drug? This is a man that went to visit President Nixon and um, requested a DEA enforcement badge so he could help solve the drug problem in America. Um, this is a man, as you uh, heard to start out this documentary, who had a rage-induced fit on stage when someone in accused him of basically being addicted to the drugs he was addicted to. And why was this not hypocrisy to Elvis, and why was this a different thing in his mind? Well, Elvis very specifically came from a specific background of extreme poverty. Elvis, when he was a child, likely was not able to get the proper health care he needed on a regular basis, and was certainly not able to get anything like 
the drugs necessary to feel better. This combined with speculation that Elvis had various possible congenital health problems similar to his mother who died at a young age, um, but we might add that Elvis's mother also had an alcohol issue which contributed to her health problems, which Elvis by all accounts did not have. Elvis did not have an alcohol issue. If he had, he would not have probably lived as long as he had considering the extreme drug cocktail to which he was addicted. But, unfortunately, by the end of the 1970s, by 1977, Elvis had become so addicted to such a wide variety of dangerous drugs, all of them, mind you, deadly in an overdose situation, from what my research tells me, we see a situation where Elvis's fate was basically predetermined by a doctor who prescribed him medicine like this. It's actually uh, eerily similar to the fate of Michael Jackson, who went further and further down the road of, I will sleep no matter what, and you will drug-induce me into a sleep, and that will be that. It's with great irony, I note, that many of Elvis's contemporaries who were uh, nasty in Elvis's mind for being street drug addicts, in some cases outlived uh, Elvis himself because they were not on as strong of drugs as him. The drugs that Elvis was given, you could argue, um, there are no naturally occurring substances as incredibly powerful as the synthetic phenobarbital or the stupefying quaalude. Um, absolutely nothing like that. It's, it's utterly insane that someone would be prescribed those two drugs at the same time, let alone in the context of opioids and regular modern benzodiazepam Valium. It's a recipe for disaster and death, and it's exactly what happened to Elvis Presley. And Elvis himself felt safe because, in his mind, and this is why this happened to Elvis, in his mind a doctor could not do him any wrong. The doctor was prescribing medicine, and if the doctor said he needs the medicine to feel better, then that's what he needs. He had a naive blind trust in his doctors. And it mirrors, actually, the naive blind trust of patients in our modern era that precipitated our modern opioid crisis. Doctors were brainwashed into pushing Oxycontin and Vicodin onto their patients, and in turn the patients became addicted, in some cases died, in some cases became heroin addicts and died, and have precipitated the insane situation we have at this point with the fentanyl drug problem causing rampant deadly overdoses. So. This is Mark Sadler for a Fine Retro Review saying, I hope you learned something from this documentary and you understand that drug addiction is drug addiction no matter what. And just because a physician has prescribed someone drugs, they can make a mistake. And those drugs can be very dangerous. So I encourage you all to practice responsible um, use of drugs those prescribed to you, and if you make the unfortunate decision to use illegal drugs, to be responsible in the use of those, um, because no one wants you to pass away, and no one wants you to meet the face fate of Elvis, who undoubtedly suffered very much into the end on such a drug cocktail, and it's, it's very sad to even discuss. So thank you, and if you found this video useful, you can subscribe to my channel and I'll be posting future history documentaries about uh, music and I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you.